Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Sharks for Kids Marine Science Hangout. Uh, my name is Joe Grabowski. I'll be your host for today. For those who are new to Sharks for Kids, we're all about bringing um, shark conservation and ocean conservation and science into classrooms throughout North America and the world. Uh, we do it through outreach, we do it through education, and we do it through adventure. So uh, if you haven't visited Sharks for Kids, uh, it's very easy to find, sharksforkids.com. You can find all sorts of curriculum material, all sorts of videos and interviews with experts, um, posters, things you can put in your classroom. It's an awesome website, so definitely do check it out after the Hangout. But we are here today to hang out with Toby uh, Daly Engel. Uh, Toby is a marine biologist. She's also a professor at the University of West Florida. Uh, as a student, she did field work in Hawaii and the Gulf of Mexico. And she currently studies reproductive strategies of sharks. And for those who don't know, um, I think we're going to learn some pretty cool things today. There's different varieties and there's some pretty neat ways um, that sharks do reproduce. And many of them reproduce slowly or in small numbers, which makes them susceptible to uh, extinction from overfishing. So, Toby, it's so great to have you joining us today. Thank you so much, Joe. I'm really excited to be here and talk about what I am the most excited about, which is sharks. Perfect. So we were just talking before we started, and you were in the field last in October, and it was in getting October. a little chilly for the sharks. Yeah. Yep. So I imagine things will be hopefully ramping up for you soon. Oh yeah, springtime is when sharks start to have babies. So that's when my lab is kind of springs into action. All right. Well, we've got a great group of classrooms in Canada and the US joining us today. Um, so we're very excited for your lesson today and then we're gonna jump into some Q&A and I have a feeling that they're gonna have lots of questions about sharks. Excellent. All right, let's do it. How's that? Can you hear me? Yep, presentation's up, looks good. All right, let's talk. So today we're gonna talk about sharks, but not just anything about sharks. We're gonna talk about shark reproduction and how that affects shark conservation. And then we're gonna talk about the reality of shark attack. So a little, just a little bit about me. Um, I was always really interested in marine science, um, especially sharks, although I grew up in New York, so not a whole lot of sharks uh, where I grew up, which was in the mountains, not in New York City, but uh, really in the land. But for some reason, sharks have always fascinated me. I went to college in Ohio and I majored in biology. I worked for two years in Boston where I learned some other skills like laboratory skills and how to study genetics. I went to the University of Hawaii for my master's and my PhD, which was exactly as fun as it sounds because I got to be in Hawaii. This picture, by the way, is a picture of me and a six gill shark, which is a weird deep water species that kind of looks like a dinosaur. I actually spent three years in Arizona studying bugs, kind of sharky bugs, but still bugs, and that was fun. And after that, I moved to Florida to be a professor. And now I study shark reproduction, which means shark mating. Um, and the way I do this is with something called molecular ecology. That is using molecules in the lab and ecology out in the field, which in our case, when I say the field, I really mean the ocean and other bodies of water, together to study shark reproduction. So sometimes my students and I are out on the boat and sometimes we're in the lab. So why study sharks? Aside from the fact that I think they're kind of cool. Um, this picture, by the way, is not a real picture. It's just a funny picture, but Definitely photoshopped that shark is not really behind those divers. Um, but some cool things about sharks that make them really different from other animals is that they've been adapted to many, many different environments. So sharks have been around for hundreds of millions of years. 
way before the dinosaurs, when there were not a whole lot of other big animals around and none at all on the land. So they had a lot of time to evolve in different environments like rivers and oceans and deep sea and up in the Arctic where it's freezing, freezing cold and some places where it's, the water is really warm. They're also what we call apex predators. And I bet a lot of you know what that is. Apex predators are at the very top of the food chain. So they help keep all of the other animals in the food chain healthy, kind of like lions do when they pick on the hurt or old or sick members of their prey. And that leaves the healthy ones to go on and have babies and overall, the whole species is better. Also, sharks have six senses, which is one more than we do. So they have all the same ones we do. They can touch, they can smell, they can see, they can do all of those things really well. And then they have another one, which is an electro sense. And they use that sense kind of like a medical, a metal detector to find small fishes that are buried in the sand because every living thing gives off a very small amount of electricity and sharks can pick up on this. They have really amazing immune systems, meaning they don't get sick very often. Also because they've had hundreds of millions of years of evolution to work on it. They do get sick, but not as often as a lot of other animals. And last but not least, they have cartilage instead of bone. And cartilage is that soft stuff at the end of your nose and also in the tops of your ears. And it's kind of stiff, but not as hard as bone. And it makes them very light, very buoyant, able to swim, but also very, very strong. But what I think is the most special thing about sharks and the weirdest thing in a lot of ways is how they reproduce. Now, most fishes, if you've ever been fishing or if you've got a goldfish at home, most fishes just lay eggs. And this picture shows um, a bunch of those pink things are actually the eggs. And so the female releases a bunch of eggs in a cloud um, and the male fertilizes them. And the babies are really, really, really tiny. They're actually in part of the plankton. So very tiny, tiny, tiny little fish larvae. Sharks, though, are really different. They actually give birth kind of almost exactly like humans. So here is a pregnant human on the left, and on the right is a pregnant sandbar shark. And so you can see the female sandbar sharks do get very, very big. Um, and the babies will actually grow inside their uterus. So sharks have uteruses just like humans, except, except they have two. And they attach to the mom via an umbilical cord or just like you did when you were a baby. Um, or sometimes they have a yolk sac in the uterus with them and they eat that, kind of like a chicken. But either way, they're born live just like people. And just like people, they take a while to grow up. Depends on the species. And there's about 400 different kinds of sharks and stingrays out there. But most of them take quite a long time to grow up, and they may live 100 years or longer. So they're very much more like people in how they reproduce and how they grow instead of other fishes like that goldfish that you might have at home. I know I had one, and it only lived for a couple of years. It doesn't normally live as long as a person. So why do we care? Why do I study reproduction? Well, first off, we don't know very much about shark reproduction, and that's why I study it. But do you care? Well, if you like sharks, then you might know that, unfortunately, there's a lot of people in the world who don't like sharks. Um, and a lot of them fish for these sharks and kill them thinking that they don't matter very much to the environment. And unfortunately, that means that there are not nearly as many sharks in the world as there used to be. And sharks as apex predators are really important to the environment. So why are sharks disappearing? Well, 
Part of it is because they have very valuable fins. Um, in a lot of parts, of, not as much in the US, um, but in parts of Canada and parts of Asia, specifically China and Hong Kong, among others, people really like to eat shark fin soup. It's considered something that people used to celebrate. So they'll have shark fin soup at weddings and stuff, and it's really special. So fishermen will, can make a lot of money by catching sharks and selling their fins. Um, so unfortunately, what this means for the sharks is that they get their fins cut off and then usually get thrown back in the water. And because of this, people across the world have realized that this should be an illegal practice, kind of like fishing for whales, which is also illegal across most of the world. But just like whale fishing, some people um, and some countries fish for sharks no matter what because they can make a lot of money. Another reason sharks are disappearing is simply because people eat them just like any other fish. So they're an important resource in some parts of the world. I mean, you can go to the grocery store pretty much every day and depending on where you are, you can buy shark meat and some of it tastes pretty good. So they're disappearing because of their tasty flesh. Um, this is kind of a long and complicated slide but what I want you to notice is these are data showing the number of large coastal sharks from 1974 to about 2002. And this stuff is taken from one part of the country off of in the Atlantic Ocean, off of the east coast of North America. And it shows the number of those four particular sharks that I have over there on the right, that's a sandbar shark, a silky shark, a dusky shark, and a black tip shark. And what you can see is that the number of sharks is represented by the height of those gray bars. So people started fishing for sharks um, using real like big scale fishing boats like you get for for tuna fish starting in about 1980 and then only about 10 or 12 years later the population had crashed meaning there were so few sharks that it couldn't even be fished any longer and so the united states had to pass a law that said you're no longer allowed to fish for these sharks because they're starting to go away and you can see about 10 years later in 2002, there still weren't as many of these four species of sharks as there had been earlier. So we know when we start to fish for sharks like we fish for a lot of other fishes, um, like cod or salmon um, or any of the other yummy fish that you might eat at home, they don't really, uh, they can't tolerate it. They just start to kind of disappear almost as if it was a group of people, you know, a group of people, if they disappeared, they wouldn't just come back the next year. Long time for us to grow up. So another reason sharks are disappearing is because people like to fish for them for sport, kind of like marlin or sailfish or other big fishes. And uh, unfortunately, this means that a lot of sharks are caught and they die, usually just so that people can take pictures with them. Um, and as we know, sharks take many, many, many years to grow up. So the sharks in these pictures that you see people fishing for are potentially 30 to 50 years old. So another reason sharks are disappearing is because of something called bycatch. Bycatch is whenever you're fishing for something and you catch something that you're not actually fishing for. So if you're fishing for something like tuna, which is a really big industry in North America and elsewhere in the world to sell as tuna fish in a grocery store or um, at the fish market, a lot of times the fishermen will catch sharks. And that's because the sharks are in the same area as the tuna maybe chasing the tuna or chasing the same other prey fish that the tuna are interested in. So when fishermen catch sharks, oftentimes the sharks don't survive because I'll let you in on a secret that most people don't know about sharks. They're really fragile. 
So sometimes you can catch a fish and unhook it and let it go and it'll just be fine. Some, I used to fish for bass and they are great fish. You can just pick them up, take a picture and let them go. But sharks, for some reason, and we're still trying to understand why, oftentimes they die after they're released, even if they're released alive. And we think that's because of stress. So anytime a shark is killed in something like a tuna fishing boat, even if it's thrown away alive, it may die later. And these fishing boats catch a lot of sharks. And then last but not least, a big reason sharks are disappearing is because of fear. And that's kind of understandable considering all of the different ways that we talk about sharks. So if you see something on the news, it's usually not about how cool sharks are. It's usually news saying somebody's been. So I think that's totally understandable. When I'm um, on the water, when I'm surfing, I am definitely thinking about sharks and it's totally normal. But what you wanna think about since you guys are into sharks is when you see something like this come across your computer screen, what do you think? Right? It looks like a shark. And that's definitely what that surfer is thinking. And that's because sharks are scary and we know that they can hurt us. But in reality, this doesn't really look like a shadow in that wave. Look at the dorsal fin, that spin that sticks off on the top. And look at the caudal fin, the tail fin of that shadow in that wave. It doesn't look so much like a shark as it does a dolphin. But because sharks are, make us nervous, that's the first thing you think of. So let's talk about the reality of shark attack. Turns out shark attack is really rare. In fact, since human beings started counting, which was in 1580, only about 2,500 shark attacks have ever been recorded. Um, and most of them are not fatal. Very, very few people are attacked by sharks and even fewer people die. And that's because we are not their food. We evolved on land and sharks evolved in the water. So when we get attacked, we humans get attacked by sharks, usually it's because they're kind of trying to figure out what we are. They're not necessarily trying to kill us and eat us. So the United States has, for instance, has between five and 15 15 attacks per year, but usually only one every two years is actually fatal. And most United States attacks occur in California and Florida. And that's because those two states have the most beaches and the most people. So now I'm going to stop talking for a second because I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you to think about it and talk about it in your classroom for a minute. Most shark attacks occur between 1 and 3 p.m. Okay, take a minute to think about why. Is that when the sharks are hungry? Is that when Subway is open? Toby, would you like me to pick a class and see what they think? That would be great. Okay. Let's try uh, Mrs. Harmon's group. What, why do you guys think it happens between 1 or 3 o'clock? Do you guys have a guess? Stand up and tell them your reason. Just Ryan. Because if it's dark, the humans, and if it's night, and there's a boat, a shark can just come come out and just jump out of the water and eat some. Oh. It's one and three, though, between the afternoon. No. Like, some boats can, can be out at night. Yeah, but the question is, why do most attacks occur between one o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah. Let's try one more guess, and then we'll visit another class. Yeah, what do you think? Put your hand down. Let's just put your hand down. Maybe because you're hungry 
order fake or steals? Okay. Yeah, so maybe that's when the sharks are getting hungry. Why else do you think? I'm going to jump to another class now. We'll go to Mrs. Scholl's group. I'll turn your microphone on. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. Why do you guys think that the attacks are happening between 1 and 3 o'clock? We think the attacks are happening be between 1 and 3 o'clock because... It I missed that. Yeah, we didn't hear the answer, guys. We think it happens between 1 and 3 o'clock because it's feeding time, and that's when most people are at the beach. Okay. Exactly. You got it. That is when most people are in the water, not sharks. And that's because shark attack depends on people. Um, like I said, sharks aren't really have not evolved to think about people as food. So the more people in the water, the more likely the shark is to make a mistake and accidentally mistake a person for prey. Good job, you guys. I knew you knew it. All right, so let's talk about the truth about shark attack. Only about three species of sharks out of the 400 and more sharks and stingrays out there are responsible for most attacks on people. And those are bull sharks, tiger sharks, and great whites. And great whites, I think, are the most famous, but bull sharks are actually the ones responsible for most attacks. And that's because they're a little bit smaller than the other ones. Tiger sharks and great whites are really, can get really big. And when you're that big, you don't like to come in very shallow. But bull sharks, are kind of a medium-sized shark. And so if they're chasing a school of fish, they're more likely to get into shallower water where they might encounter people. But we think, as scientists, that shark attacks on people are a result of mistaken identity. They maybe see something like this picture on the left, which is a surfboard with a person on it, and maybe they think it looks kind of like the picture on the right, which is a sea turtle. And that's because most sharks hunt from way below under the water and they're looking up. So they see a person and they think maybe, gosh, that looks like uh, a turtle or maybe a seal. And not only that, we kind of look like seals. And um, so maybe we're like the kind of seal that is hurt or injured because we're not as graceful in the water as something like a seal or a sea turtle. And we scientists have analyzed the size of the bite marks that are left in things like surfboards and boats and occasionally humans after an attack. And they found that it's usually younger sharks that accidentally bite people. And we think that's because as they get older, and as I mentioned, some of them get really old, they get more uh, information about how to tell prey like fishes apart from not prey like humans using just their eyes. Because, you know, sharks are kind of like dogs or babies. They don't have really good hands like we do. So when they want to explore something and figure out what it is, they use their mouths. So oftentimes, Sharks will bite someone trying to figure out what, the, what it is and figure out pretty fast that it's not that good to eat. So, unfortunately though, sharks are attacking us way less than we are attacking them. So, as I mentioned, sharks kill mm, three to five people per year. Depends on the year. But humans, unfortunately, kill over 100 million sharks every year. And I'm in the US, so I don't know as much about the population of Canada, unfortunately. But that 100 million people is about a third of the whole population of the US. So that many sharks are dying pretty much every year. And it may even be more. And I just told you that the way that sharks reproduce, they only have, you know, usually between five to 10 babies every two years, those babies 
can take up to 15 years, 20 years to grow up, and then they live a long time. So it would be kind of like taking 100 million humans out of the population. They don't just come back really fast, unfortunately. And because of that, many shark species are at risk of becoming extinct. So things like hammerheads, um, which I think are really cool, even though they're really weird looking, things like great white sharks, and a bunch of other species of sharks are unfortunately at risk of extinction, meaning that we need to start to think about conservation and helping to protect shark populations. So if you're like me and you still think to yourself, well, when I go to the beach, I'm still a little scared of sharks because let me tell you that is the most normal thing in the world. Um, let me give you some statistics. You are four times more likely to be killed by a vending machine than a shark. I kid you not. You know, so you know how your mom always told you don't rock the vending machine if your chips are stuck and you put money in the machine and they don't come out? Don't pick it up and rock it because those things can fall on you. And apparently they do it a lot, enough to squish more people than sharks. You are three times more likely to be struck by lightning than to be bitten by a shark. Not even killed by a shark, just bitten by a shark. More people, many more people, it turns out, are killed by Christmas trees than sharks. Isn't that crazy? I think of this every single time Christmas rolls around. And it's because sometimes Christmas trees get dry, and when people hang lights on them, they can catch fire. So Christmas trees can be deadly. And last but not least, you're more likely to be killed by falling coconut than a shark, even if you live places where they have coconuts. So, the reality of shark attack. So let's talk about protecting sharks. If you're like me and you think sharks are really cool and that they're an important part of the environment, things you can do are don't fish for sharks. This depends on where you are. I'm in Florida. And there's a lot of people that like a fish for sharks because it's fun, reeling them in and fighting them and they're big and strong. But as I mentioned, even if those people unhook the shark once it's on the boat and let it go, that shark is most likely still going to die. So if you catch a shark, cut the fishing line. Don't take the shark out of the water. It's more likely, um, to live if you leave it in the water and cut the line right away. Um, you can also support the laws that protect sharks. Um, I know a major airline in China just banned shark, uh, shark fins on board. So slowly there are starting to be more and more laws protecting things like sharks that are an important predator and at risk of extinction. Don't eat shark fin soup if you can avoid it. Um, I have never had it, but I've heard it's pretty gross anyway. So if we can make another type of soup really popular, say chicken soup or vegetable soup, then people won't be needing as much shark fin soup and they won't be fishing for shark fins. And don't buy shark products and tell everyone you know not to buy things like shark cartilage pills. People think that these things keep them healthy or can even prevent cancer because sharks have such good immune systems. And that is just not true. So don't buy shark products at the grocery store if you can avoid it. I would just like to thank all of the people that have helped me in my research and all of the things that I've been telling you about today. And with that, I will take any questions you guys have. All right, Toby, thanks so much for all that information, the great pictures. And, you know, it's a lot of people don't really think about it, but you were asking about the population of Canada. So we're, we're just over 30 million. So um, almost three times our population is being if we compared it to sharks, it's being killed each year. So, um, yeah, that's pretty scary to think about. That's a lot. All right. Well, Toby, if you want to pop back on, uh, cancel the share screen, we'll get our first classroom on the go. Let's Excellent. jump. Perfect. Let's jump to our first group. They're actually just around the corner from me in Guelph, Ontario. It's Mrs. Bendo's class. 
uh, your microphone's on if you want to come up nice and close and ask uh, a couple questions. Can you try that again? Yeah, your microphone is just a little a little choppy today. So if you type it in the into the the chat bar, we'll we'll grab it right away. Sometimes technology isn't always cooperating. There we go. What's the biggest shark? <gasps> the biggest shark in the world now is the whale shark. Good question. And it's named that because it is so big, just like a whale. But believe it or not, the biggest shark in the world is not very dangerous. And they can get pretty big, like 60 feet long. So think of something like three, like school buses just lined up. Um, these big sharks, in fact, eat some of the smallest things in the ocean, which are called plankton. So just like the biggest whales will eat plankton and shrimp and little tiny stuff instead of big stuff, whale sharks are the very same way. They're not very dangerous at all. They're very harmless if you're, unless you're a shrimp. All right, go ahead and type us another question. How many species How many? of sharks are there? Well, there's a few different kinds of sharks, believe it or not. There's sharks, and then there's stingrays, which are really just flat sharks. It's the same animal, just a different shape. So there's as many as 400 or 450 species of sharks and stingrays, but of sharks all by themselves, there's way less, probably only about 150, but we actually know very, very little about shark species and diversity. In fact, that's something that I study in my lab when I use genetics on sharks. Sometimes we realize that the sharks that we're studying don't have the right name. In fact, they're different than all the other sharks out there. And so I have found um, just in my research as many as 10 new species that probably are going to be given their very own name sometime soon. So there's not that many species of sharks, but there's actually new species being discovered every day. Awesome, very cool. Thank you for the questions from Ontario. Um, we'll jump over. We have Mrs. Harmon's group. They're joining us from Heartland, Wisconsin. If you guys have a couple questions, go ahead. Hey, Connor, you can come up and ask a question. You have to speak. Come nice and close so we can hear you. Okay. What's the smallest shark? <clears throat> Good question. The smallest shark is called a dwarf shark. That shark is only about this big, believe it or not. There's still a chance that we might discover a smaller shark, but right now that guy is the smallest one we know. And it lives in the deep, deep ocean, and it's um, so we don't haven't seen it very often, but it's teeny, teeny, tiny. You could almost keep it in a fish tank. Big shark. Hey, Lana, go ahead. How big are the how big are the um sharks' teeth? Well, it depends on the size of the shark. So some shark teeth uh, can be super little. If, say, they belong to a dwarf shark, then they have to be pretty small to fit into that little shark's mouth. But we have had found fossil teeth that belong to extinct species of sharks that are no longer alive but we have fossil teeth that we found in the ground, just like we found fossil bones of dinosaurs, and some of them are huge. The tooth alone is about five or six inches long. So shark teeth can get pretty big. All right, great questions from Wisconsin. Let's meet our next class. We have a group of grade twos joining us from Steinbach, uh, Manitoba. Let me turn your microphone on. 
and come nice and close and let's hear your questions. Okay, go ahead, Carter. What are sharks' enemies besides humans? Hmm, that's a good question too. Man, you guys have awesome questions. Some shark, things that are predators on sharks are anything from alligators to other sharks to dolphins and whales. Um, and again, it kind of depends on the shark, like really big sharks. Once they're grown up, they don't have a whole lot of predators apart from humans. But when, when sharks are young, when they're babies, as I mentioned, they take a long time to grow up. So almost as long as, as we do. Just like when we're young, we're smaller and we have to watch out a little bit more. Sharks, when they're babies, have more predators. But the biggest thing that eats baby sharks is other sharks, uh, which is kind of strange to think about. But really, anything that's bigger than a baby shark will try to eat it. Things like saltwater crocodiles and sometimes even groups of dolphins will get together and they'll kind of together will hunt down a shark, almost like lions do um, when they're hunting things like zebras or gazelles. Um, they'll work together to get bigger sharks because a big shark is a pretty good meal. So there's a lot of stuff that eats sharks until they get big enough to fight back. Um, how, how are sharks fragile? By what I mean is they don't respond very well to stress. So anytime that they are taken out of their environment, taken out of the water and brought into the air, they, their whole body starts to kind of freak out. And just like humans, if we are under stress for a long time, it can make us sick. And with sharks, they are really well adapted to their environment. They have had hundreds of millions of years to make sure that they're perfectly suited to doing what they do, to being sharks. And so, unfortunately, if you mess with them at all, if you take them out of the water, be like being abducted by aliens would be to us. And that's a pretty stressful thing. And of course, you know, they can't breathe in the air and they have to keep swimming in the water to breathe. So we think that the same stuff that makes us sick if we get too much stress happens in sharks. And so scientists right now are studying this and they go out on boats with people who like to fish for sharks and they take blood samples and they look at the stress chemicals in their blood to try and understand what's going on. So we're not really sure, but we know that sharks, for whatever reason, they die really easily. And even when you think that they're doing great, sometimes they'll just die. So that's what I mean by fragile. Um, they're not as strong and as tough as we people kind of think they are. All right, well, we've got some great questions from these, gotta be some future marine biologists in these classrooms. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, we'll get our next all right. uh, Mrs. Yeah, Garner's great threes uh, great three uh, uh, from Evergreen, Illinois. We're ready for it. We're ready for it. Okay. Go ahead, Shemite. Go close to the camera, Shemite. Okay. Here it goes. So you can sit on your feet. There you go. Perfect. Go ahead. How many babies can a shark have each spring? Ooh, good question. Well, first of all, some sharks don't have babies every year. They have babies every two years because when a shark gets pregnant, it stays pregnant for like an entire year, which is a long time. And so after that, they kind of need a year off, like you might expect. So some sharks give birth every two years. In fact, most of them only every two years. And on average, they only have about three to five babies at a time. So, but that really depends on the size of the mama. So the really big sharks, sharks like hammerheads, 
can have more, maybe 50 babies at a time. Whereas most sharks are smaller and they can only have a few. And then there's a few weird sharks, like white sharks. They're big, so you think they'd have a lot of babies, but for some reason they only have a couple at a time. So sharks don't have very many babies at all, not nearly as much as other animals. Good question. Okay. Um, I think Donovan, you can, ask, can Donovan ask his question? Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, Donovan. You remember what you're going to ask? How many sharks are there? How many sharks are in the whole world? Whew. I don't know. I think what we need is more people like you guys growing up and studying sharks. Because I don't know the answer to that question, and I don't think anybody does. There's a lot that we don't know about sharks. So if you're interested in sharks and you like science, you should think about biologists and then you can answer that question for yourself all right thank you we're going to jump to our last class we have grade fives joining us uh, from cranford new jersey mrs shoals grade fives uh microphone should be on okay um what country kills the most sharks mm, good question um mostly countries that fish for sharks for their fins. So places like China and Hong Kong, where they use a lot of shark products, um, fish for sharks, and so they end up killing a lot of sharks. But as I mentioned, sharks are an important part of their culture because of the way shark fin soup is used. Um, and But other countries like like um, Australia uh, also kill a lot of sharks because they have a lot of the beaches, a lot of tourists go to Australia and um, it's not very good when somebody gets hurt by a shark, it makes people not want to visit. So some places where there's a lot of vacation space, they will also kill a lot of sharks. But for the most part, it's places in the world that like to use shark products as food. So it used to be the US and we still kill quite a few sharks. Um, Canada, not nearly as much, um, but we're slowly starting to put regulations in place and make laws that protect shark populations. But not everybody really cares that much about sharks, I think because they're kind of scary, which I totally understand. So for instance, you're totally not allowed to catch dolphins and you might even see if you shop for tuna fish a little word on the tuna fish can that says dolphin safe tuna and that means that the people who catch tuna made sure that there were no dolphins caught but the same thing doesn't exist for sharks because not quite as cute although I think they are as dolphins so we're still trying to find better ways to protect sharks but here in North America, we kill fewer than in other places in the world. All right, go ahead with one more if you got it. Which species of sharks is the closest to becoming extinct? Ooh, probably the ones that we don't know about yet. And I know that's not the answer that you were expecting because that is, but it's true. There's shark population species out there that may be going extinct that we haven't even discovered as humans. But the ones that we know about, probably the closest to extinction here in North America is not actually a shark. It's actually a type of stingray called the sawfish. So if you've ever seen a sawfish, it's kind of weird looking, it's got a really long nose with teeth sticking out on either side of the long nose. Um, and it's actually a type of stingray, but it looks like a shark. And that is right now 
the only shark that is on the, or the only shark or ray that is on the endangered species list here in the US. Um, but other types of sharks are, that are close to extinction are some species of hammerheads. And in um, other parts of the world, like Australia, they have sand tiger sharks, which you might have seen because they're in a lot of aquariums. So if you've ever been to an aquarium and you've seen like a really big, slow moving shark with really snaggly teeth that kind of sticks out like that, that's what we call a sand tiger shark. In Australia, they call it a gray nurse shark and it is really close to being extinct there, unfortunately. All right. Well, great questions from all the classrooms. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Toby, huge thanks for joining us today. It was a great lesson. And I know for sure that people are rethinking their, maybe what they thought they knew about sharks, I hope for sure. Um, before we do sign off though, I just want to mention that uh, if you haven't already, check out sharksforkids.com. You'll find all kinds of curriculum resources you can use and you have to visit our YouTube page. There are some great videos uh, that you can find on hammerhead sharks and spotting sharks with drones. So definitely check out our YouTube page and follow us on other things like Twitter and, and Facebook and such. Um, but Toby, it was an absolute pleasure to host you today and to have you for our marine scientists for January. Thanks, Joe. It was my pleasure. All right. Well, we love to end off by letting the classes say goodbye and thank you. So I'm going to slowly start turning the microphones back on. It might get a little bit loud. And as the class we want to say goodbye and thank you, we'll sign up. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weeks, and we'll be back with another Marine Science Hangout in February. <laughs>